Wow. Thank you. So here we are, like six months. Is this it? Yeah, so six months since our story aired about Amendment 3. Yes. <laughs> and Alabama decided yes. They did. It, it passed with overwhelming numbers, and I could not have been more thankful um, that they approved it. You know, I, I just didn't want anyone else to fall through the same loopholes that we did. So, wow. Yeah, I couldn't be more grateful. And were you watching that night? Were you just in tuned with the election? Or were you like, I'm not going to even look at it. I'll find out the morning after. Yeah, I, I didn't. I, I was like, I don't want to know. I'm just I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to wake up. And you know, wherever the cards fall. You know. And I woke up, and I looked, and it had passed. And I was over the moon. So I was actually. I think I actually checked Anaya's law first mm -hmm. and saw that it had passed. Mm -hmm. And then I checked mine and I was thankful for both accounts. Wow. How did your family take it? We were all aesthetic. We were happy. I kind of regret that my mother-in-law didn't live long enough to see the full passage. Mm -hmm. That's a regret of mine, but I think she knew with the support that it was gonna go through. So I take comfort in that. Wow. So the fight's not over yet though. It's not. Why not? We were given a life sentence with Judith. You know, it's not just her life sentence, it's ours too. So however many years that she comes up for parole, we still have to fight. And I worry that Every time she comes up for parole, she gets one toe closer to Georgia. So there's always that dread and that discomfort and that fear and all those feelings mixed in with it. We want her to stay where she's at. I just, it's a gut feeling. I feel like she's got something planned for Georgia. She's trying too hard to get there. Mm -hmm. So, wow. And with that being said, the 25th is a pretty big day. just take comfort that we have a terrific support network. You know, there's vocal. They're always, they go above and beyond for victims. And we know we have the support of the community. That helps. Yeah. Not only the support of the community, but I see your tattoo. Yeah, yeah. My sister and I, my sister-in-law and I both got, she had left a letter it's the only letter that is left that she had sent to her mom. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we took various parts of the letter. And after the last parole, we went and we got her signature mm -hmm. tattooed on her wrists. So. Yeah, I remember you were explaining that the last time we met. Um, but sorry, I just, it was in my view and yeah. I just had to acknowledge it. But um, you talk about support. With that support, you kind of, it's sad to say, but you've developed a sort of maybe fraternity because Lisa Ann Milliken's not the only victim, mm -hmm. right? Correct. I always try to, you know, in interviews, mention all of her victims, not just the one, because there are other families that are hurting too. You know, she left a path of destruction. It's not just ours. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, there were three kids that were raised without a mother. Mm -hmm. And John, her only survivor, he definitely carried the weight of her crimes to this day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, him and I bonded just overwhelmingly after, during the last process. I do feel like our families are just connected. We feel close to one another. And I do try to keep in my foresight that, you know, Lisa's not the only victim. And their stories matter just as much as ours. And how did you all develop that bond? I mean, <laughs> you're connected by crime, but how did how are you all able to connect with each other? Who who took the initiative to reach out to who first? 
Um, I, I, we had always wondered how they were and where they were and how they were doing and where they came to in their lives. John, I, I was doing protest posts in Facebook groups. That's how it started. And um, John's family had seen some of them and they had sent, you know, what I was saying to him and he contacted me. And, you know, he, it surprised me how alone he felt over the last 40 years. He did, he felt alone, mm -hmm. completely alone. He felt like he couldn't really, nobody understood. Mm -hmm. So we bonded in that sense. And then Genesis family, likewise, the same. Mm -hmm. They had seen protest posts and they reached out and, you know, hey, I'm so-and-so. And it was always, I am so glad to meet you because we've always wondered, you know, where y'all were, how y'all were, mm -hmm. things like that. So. Social media was a huge benefactor in all getting our families together. And you know, I told them five years ago, if you want to come to the parole, come. You're more than welcome. You know, you're a part of this too. And John lived in Texas, mm -hmm. too far. He couldn't. He did send a letter, and his family sent a letter this year. Um, Janice's daughter was there, and her granddaughter, and it was so great to meet them. They, she was given a platform to speak, and I think it was, it was just for us. We felt, I don't know the proper word. We we felt just we were proud that she was finally able to speak for her mother and give her mother a voice. Wow, so five years ago you all, <clears throat> excuse me, connected on social media? We did, all of oh my us. gosh. So this, all this happened in 1982, the early 80s, and then it was only about five years ago that you all connected? We did. Wow. Technology has just come so far and it has given so many victims' families a platform mm -hmm. to use their voice in ways that we were never able to. And you are kind of bonded by tragedy, but you're also bonded by the feeling that you're not in it by yourself, you're not in it alone. That's really what connected, you know, John and our family. He felt alone, and then we told him, you, you're not alone, we go through this every year, there's always something new that pops up. If it's not the parole process or some legal thing she's trying to pull, it's a network, a, what do you call it? A victimization type of thing, gotcha. not this. Um, so he, coming from a place where he felt completely isolated, I couldn't have been more grateful for being able to you know, meet him, honestly. Wow, and I think you have something to share with us. This, I do. It, talk about how this came to be. Yeah. Give us a little backstory. So, um, Janice's sister and nephew um, reached out to me about five years ago, and they said, you know, it was after the parole process, you know, our mother kept a scrapbook, you know, after Janice's passing. Mm -hmm. And over the years, she would add various things to it. We don't know if it would help you, you know, with the bills that you're trying to pass, but you're more than welcome to take it. Mm -hmm. And I just thought it was something she had started 40 years ago. And it was a help, actually. I was able to go back and read these articles and pinpoint certain things that legislators have called or said, and I was able to strengthen what bills that I was trying to pass through something that she didn't even know she unintentionally started. <laughs> so I kind of felt grateful for being able to include her mother in some form of process. Mm. Wow. That's the memorial for Janice Kay? This is Janice's or, funeral. Oh, her funeral. I asked uh, her nephew, you know, are you sure you, you want me to, you don't want these photos? And he's like, it goes with the scrapbook. So. And why, I know you said this is to help you with your bill, but you know that, it takes a lot to willing to give up something that mm -hmm. is a part of them. I mean, do they have copies of this or they gave their only copies to you? I'm not sure. Okay. It's possible they do have other copies. Um, but the mere fact that they entrusted you with that, like. That meant a lot to me, that I felt 
you know, those same words that they entrusted me with something so personal. Um, I'd actually thought about maybe offering it to uh, Debbie, Deborah. Okay. I'm not sure which name she goes by. But I did. I thought about offering it to her. Now that it's over and the bills have passed, it kind of should stay, I feel like, in their family. Okay. I just, I have not had the time to reach out to them about it yet. And I didn't even know that her mother had given any interviews until they gave me the scrapbook. But she, she was amazing in all the articles that she kept. I mean, it's right there at the beginning.